Hey CFS Warriors, it's Victoria coming to you tonight off the coast of France and I just want to talk to you about traveling and about how to incorporate it into your recovery as opposed to letting it be something that crashes you and puts you in a setback. I love to travel and as so many of you know I would watch travel videos when I was at home in bed because I, I hoped to get out again and it really gave me it really just helped keep my dreams alive while I was bed bound and house bound for so many years it was just you know something that I could hope to look forward to and now I'm doing it so I just want to encourage you not to be afraid to go outside of your boundaries just use good sense make sure you accommodate yourself have a plan and you can actually make uh, travel be a part of your recovery process in the right stage of the illness. So I'm just going to break it down and the first stage would be pre-travel. So basically you just want to get some your packing done as early as possible. The goal is you want to give yourself a couple of days of chill time before you leave for your trip. So the way I like to do it is divide and conquer. I like to spend a day packing clothes another different day doing toiletries and things like that and the third day kimono that little term that just kind of means all the rest you know for me that means a little mini espresso maker and fun things like that another thing you want to do is normalize the anxiety around the trip of course it's scary you've been dealing with a chronic illness and here you're going to be leaving you know your cozy little comfortable home venturing out into the great wide world it's a great thing to do but realize that anxiety is okay. Do some EFT videos with Brad Yates if it's getting to be too much. And another thing I highly recommend is watching travel videos of the destination you're going to. Because what that's gonna do is build excitement and the fun about the trip rather than, than that will help balance out that little negative thinking cycle we can get into with CFS over, oh my gosh, you know, what am I gonna do? How's this gonna work out? So when you're making arrangements for the trip, you wanna make it as easy for yourself as possible and I say some of these things knowing it's not an easy thing to do I realize that a lot of people with CFS they can't work they're very limited on finances but if it's at all possible to use things like bonus points or any extra cash you've got saved or tucked away this would be the time to splurge on things like if you can get first-class air travel or convenient location when you're on your trip which means within a very short distance to get to the things that you want to do and that may just mean once you're there requesting a room which is where you want it or changing rooms to a more of a convenient location I've also found it really helps to have room service that way you can get food when you need it and you don't have to go out depending on the stage or if you're needing to rest that day I highly recommend getting, if you're doing airport travel, get a wheelchair in the airport. My experience with it is they do not ask questions. I've often just mentioned I can't, it's hard for me to do distances because when you're traveling, in, when you're traveling internationally, you have really long corridors. And before I did this, I found that I would arrive at my vacation completely crashed. So the wheelchair is just a way to help me spend my energy credits on the vacation when I get there as opposed to on the way to getting there. So um, drop the, you know, for me it was a real pride issue in the beginning, but once you get over that, it's such a great thing, as is a scooter. Once you're at your destination, you can rent a scooter to be dropped off at your hotel so you can actually be very mobile. And uh, that's really actually a fun way to go when you're there. Now, if you're driving, just be sure to take lots of driving breaks, food, snacks, things like that. And that's what you wanna do during your day of travel. If you're on a plane, I recommend bringing water right when you get through security. Bring your own snacks that you know are good, high protein hit. Uh, I like to bring gum as well and uh, headphones that cancel out the noise. It's great to download some meditations on your phone and a pillow, because you wanna be comfortable on the flight. So another thing you want to keep in mind is baseline and landing days. It's always good to give yourself a day or two of recovery time when you go on a trip so that you have time to kind of get established and then start doing your activities a couple of days into the vacation rather than right away. Now a lot of it depends on how long you're going to be gone and I have found that longer trips are easier than shorter trips for that reason uh, because it gives me a couple of days to kind of chill get the lay of the land and then get moving. Now I always give myself a couple of landing days too when I get home where I don't have anything on the calendar, don't have anything on the books, and again this is going to be according to your level of recovery in CFS. 
because in the dark days of CFS, I was completely bed bound. I couldn't even consider leaving the house, um, much less, you know, having a landing day after a trip or two or a week of just low key stuff. But you want to plan that in so that you're not getting back and having things on your plate right away. So as far as a baseline, I like to sketch out my kind of tentative plan for the trip so I make sure that I build in rest days as well as rest times in between activities when I'm doing things. And that way, I come back refreshed and rested rather than just exhausted because I've been going, going, going on vacation. Now during the trip, you're going to want to have what I call a designated supporter. Just like people that are out partying might choose a designated driver, you want to have someone specifically that you've talked to that you know is going to be looking out for you and running interference. Whether that means, you know, checking in at the airport, handling the luggage, talking with the taxi people, uh, or bringing you breakfast when you really need to rest. <laughs> I fortunately have a husband who does that for me. So if you know whoever you're traveling with, be sure that they are fully aware of what limitations you have and what they can do to support you to make it easier so you can spend your energy credits on having fun with them and on the vacation. And of course, as we've traveled over the years, my capacity has expanded. So I'm able to do more and more of that, you know. Make sure you get the support you need. Another thing you want to do when traveling is minimize stressors and stimulus to the nervous system. CFS is classified as a neurological illness. And so if you're well enough to travel, you want to keep that nervous system calmed down. And one of the ways I do this is when I'm traveling, I keep cotton balls in my ears. And it really helps, especially places like the airplane or on a city street or in a noisy restaurant. It just kind of muffles out all the din. And you can still hear people talking, but it just really helps. And along those lines, like for instance, when, uh, when we went into a restaurant once, there was a pianist playing and it was wonderful music, but they were gonna sit us right next to the piano. And my husband said, wait, let, can you give us a quieter table? And so we were taken to the back and it was just that one simple choice that made it a lot easier on me. Uh, I remember we also stopped into a pub and it was very loud and chaotic and noisy. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is the worst atmosphere to be in. Um, as much fun as it was, but I knew it wasn't good for me. I needed to have a calmer environment. And so I just walked the length of the place and it was huge. And in the very back, there were booths and it was a really quiet atmosphere. So we just moved back there. So simple choices like that can really kind of help keep your nervous system calmed down while you're on the trip. Now be sure to bring your energetic boundaries with you. You want to keep those in place. Things I've done a, a video on that you can check out, but things like the golden bubble and boundaries. And I know when I go traveling, I love to start chatting with people that I don't know. And the thing is, it's best to keep that energy with you so that uh, you can have it when you get on vacation. Now the thing is, once you're fully recovered and you're traveling, you can chat to everybody whenever and however long you want. And this trip has been much more social for me and I'm really enjoying that. Another thing you want to do is set your own pace. Other people may want to go from morning till evening, but you know, you just go along with the things that you can and set your own pace. Don't feel like you've got to be pressured to do what everybody else is doing. That's going to be really key for you to return home, not in a crash state, but having reached forward in recovery, but within a reasonable amount so you can actually progress while you're on vacation. And it's great because when you're on vacation, you're, there are a lot of things that are drawing you out to see and do new things. And so that really gives you that, that impetus and that, um, that motivation to get out. But you have to really keep that a bit in check so you don't overdo it. But it really is a great thing for recovery if you can let it be. The last thing would be always keep snacks and water with you so you can stay hydrated and you can always give yourself some food. Remember, food is fuel, as CFS Health Program says. Always keep your snacks with you and take care of yourself. Okay, so here's my day pack and I just wanna show you what I've got in it. So at the top, I've got this nice little zippered pouch and I have my credit cards and cash in it and lip screen. And then when I go into the main pocket, I've got, I keep my water bottle in here. I've got my tea. So I love to make my green tea and keep it with me so I'm not getting too much caffeine during the day. And then I also have like a little um, 
a little bag in here that's got things like my cotton balls or my brush and some makeup or little things in here um, that you might want. And then I've got on the outside pack, I have a few things. I've got gum. I tell you, little hits of gum because they give you a little bit of, this is actually xylitol, highly recommended. It's called Spry. I tell you, I didn't make it to the dentist for a, re, for a few years when I had CFS really bad because I couldn't get out of the house. And when I came in to finally get my teeth cleaned, they were amazed at how good they were in what good of shape because I'd been chewing this gum all the time when I did my daily walks and when I did things because it helps you. I heard someone else had done like glucose tablets and it's kind of like that. It gives you a little bit of, you know, just boost and it also um, hydrates you a little bit your mouth. So basically I've got my snacks in here and this is another little favorite thing. It's a little uh, spray bottle that has a little uh, orange blossom water in it. And I tell you what, when you're hot and you're traveling, it is so awesome to pull this out and just spritz yourself. I do it on the airplane or do it when I'm out on a tour and it's a fabulous thing. So anyway, those are some of the things that I keep in my little pack. And um, that makes, reminds me, another thing that I used this trip, but I left it at the Harry Potter Warner Brothers Studios, was a little camping uh, stool. And basically you could sling it over your shoulder and it was like a one pound and it was very small, but it, was, it gave me a little place to sit when I needed it. And I have to say, I'm so happy that this trip I have climbed stairs and, you know, navigated city streets and gotten in and out of taxis and gone to restaurants and just been just doing amazing. Um, but there was a time I really needed the support. So I would have needed that chair or needed the scooter and things like that. So just do what you need to accommodate yourself when you need it. Because as you get farther down the road, you won't need it anymore. But it's about accommodating yourself so you don't crash because stopping those crashes is what will help you continue on and recover. So anyway, take care warriors and remember life isn't over, it's starting again.